Hello, my name is Agnieszka Szarkowska. I'm from the University of Warsaw, Poland. In this ILSA project video, I will present the fundamentals of pre-recorded subtitling. Subtitling is uh, famous or infamous for its constraints. Two major types of constraints are spatial and temporal, resulting from the limited space and time available for subtitles. Spatial constraints uh, stem from the limited space available on screen to insert the text. Since we cannot cover the entire screen with text, there's normally a limit of two to three lines of text placed usually at the bottom of the screen. Each line normally contains up to about 42 characters, including spaces and punctuation. The text in the subtitles should be divided into meaningful semantic units. Linguistic phrases should be kept together within one line and not broken between the lines. Temporal constraints are related to the limited time for subtitles to be displayed on screen. On the one hand, subtitles need to be synchronized with the dialogue. And on the other hand, they have to be displayed for sufficient time for viewers to read them. The commonly used minimum subtitle display time is one second and the maximum six seconds. An important constraint in subtitling is speed. The speed at which subtitles are displayed is known as reading speed, subtitle speed or subtitle presentation rate. It's typically measured in either characters per second or words per minute. While the optimum reading speed is a subject of heated debates and differs from country to country and from company to company, interlingual pre-recorded subtitles are typically displayed at the speed of 12 to 17 characters per second. If subtitles are displayed at a very slow speed, viewers may reread them. If subtitles are too fast, viewers may not be able to read them at all or to comfortably follow the images in the video. Spotting, also known as timing, cueing or time coding, is the process of deciding when a subtitle appears and disappears. While spotting, a subtitler defines the in time, that is the beginning of a subtitle, and its out time, the end, using time codes. Spotting can be done by the translator from scratch or by another person who prepares a template, which is also known as the master file. With time codes and dialogues in the original language of the film, which is then translated by the translator. Just like every page in a book has its own number, every frame in a film is also numbered using a time code. In this example, the numbers in the time code show the hour, minute, second, and frame of the film. The preparation of subtitles requires software, and there are numerous options available, ranging for free and often quite simple software, for instance, Subtitle Workshop or Subtitle Edit, to powerful professional software with numerous functionalities, such as Easy Titles, Fab Subtitler, WinCups, Subtitle Next, and many others. In the past, all the software was desktop based. Now, more and more of it is available in the cloud and it's accessed through the internet browser rather than installed on a computer. Many companies in the subtitling industry have their own proprietary software, which can either be desktop based or cloud based and is only available within the company. Finally, only some of the subtitling programs allow the production of live subtitles, for instance, Fab Subtitler Live or WinCAP's QLive. You can find more information about interlingual pre-recorded subtitling in various subtitling guidelines, including the uh, ESIS code of good subtitling practice, and many others.